is frequency. So frequency is going to be the first main way that we do descriptive statistics. So we're going to have a bunch of data and then we're going to say, okay, here's how I'm kind of sorting and categorizing and organizing my data. So consider this example. 20 students were asked how many hours they worked per day. Their response in hours are as follows. So how do we read this, right? We're being told that their responses to this are as follows. So first of all, let's look at the first column, data value. So this is how many hours a student works per day. So the options were two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So it may be the case that we went out and we surveyed a bunch of people and we said, how many hours of work, how many hours a day do you work? And we said two, three, four, five, six, or seven. And then, you know, they responded by selecting what number matched their work schedule on a daily basis. The second number tells us how many responded. So the second column frequency says three students reported that they work two hours a day. Right, so that's what we're saying here. So if I were to kind of grab this. So this is three students work two hours per day. Right, the next one says five students work three hours a day. The next one says three students work four hours a day. And how many students work seven hours a day? That's just one. So I have one response that was seven hours per day. So that represents one student who worked seven hours a day. So now the thing we want to do is we want to look at cumulative frequency. So this is the accumulation of previous frequencies. So when we list this in order for our data value, then the way that we create our cumulative frequency is we first start here with three, right? So it's our first entry because it's the smallest amount of hours per day. I don't have any information that precedes it. So I just straight copy the three over. But now when I go down to the next row, I'm going to add the five and three together. So I'm going to take my five and to it, I'm going to add the three. And so my cumulative frequency right now is eight. So that tells me that eight people work two or three hours per day. And we can repeat this again with the next one. So I'm going to have three plus eight, which is 11. So now I know that 11 people work four or less hours a day. And then the next guy, I'm going to have six plus 11, which is 17. So I know that 17 people work five or less hours per day. The next one I'm gonna get two plus 17, right? So I'm always adding, this eight came from here. This 11 came from here. This 17 goes here, right? So it's all coming from the one right above it. So I'm gonna have 19 here. So 19 people work six or less hours, and then 20 people work seven or less hours. Notice this too, if I were to add up all of, that squiggly symbol means total or sum. If I were to add up all the responses in my frequency column, I would actually get 20. So it's imperative that this 20 needs to match the cumulative frequency because by the time I get to the end of adding everybody up, I should be at my total. If I didn't get 20 as my last entry for the cumulative frequency, that means I missed someone. I didn't count someone or perhaps I miscounted my total. Um, 
So that's frequency and cumulative frequency. So let's talk about relative frequency. So relative frequency is the ratio, which is the, the number over the total, of students who responded with n hours per day. So everything's going to be over 20. So it's going to be something divided by 20, something divided by 20, something divided by 20, right? We're always dividing by the total. And the thing that we're dividing by the total is the number of responses. So three, five, three, six, two, and one. And that's how you build your relative frequency. So it says to me, like we already knew that, <clears throat> for example, in the five hour category, we knew that six people worked five hours per day. Another way to express that is six out of 20 people that responded worked, worked five hours per day. So I could look at that just as a ratio, or I could say, you know, this is 0 0.30 or 0 0.3 or 30%, however you want to do it. So this is 0 0.15. This is 0 0.25, this is 0 0.15, and then this is 0 0.1, and this is 0 0.05, I hope. Yes, okay. So the other thing to notice too is that when you get your relative frequencies, it should all add up to one. So if I take 0.15, add it to 0.25, Add that to 0.15, add it to 0.3, 0 0.1, and 0.05, you get one. So again, the total here is one, which is what you want. That's really important, right? That represents 100%. So for cumulative frequency, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing as we did, uh, sorry, with cumulative relative frequency, we're going to do the same thing we did for cumulative frequency, where we're just going to go ahead and add up. So I'm just going to um, take this straight across. I get 0 0.15, right? So 15% of respondents reported two hours. Then I'm going to do 0 0.25 plus 0 0.15, and I'm going to get 0 0.4. So 0, so 40% or 0.4 of respondents said that they worked three hours or less. And now I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna bring over my 0 0.15 and I'm gonna bring down my 0.40 and I'm gonna get 0 0.55 and I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat that process. So 0 0.3 plus 0 0.55, that gives me 0 0.85. Then I get 0 0.1 plus 0 0.85. And then I get 0 0.05. And just like before, how we had this, this matchup here, like so our total was one in our cumulative frequency and our ending number was one as well. And so that needs to match. They both need to be one. <clears throat> so an important thing to note that in our relative frequency, we had really nice, easy, ratios that didn't go for more than two decimal places. If we had something that had a repeating decimal or that required rounding, we may not necessarily add up to one. And that's not because we did anything wrong. It's just because there's a rounding error there. And that's just what happens when you round. All right, so if you want to take a little break, now would be a good time. Um, I'm going to go jump into grouped frequency. And then we're going to do an example of how to read these frequency tables. So in this example, we have heights and in inches of a sample of 100 male semi-professional soccer players. What we notice here that's different from the first example, so going back to the first example, how many hours a student works per day? So my choices were two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Even though time is a 
quantitative, continuous, variable. It's not really that your boss would ever schedule you for, you know, 3.179 hours, right? So you we usually get scheduled in like kind of no more than, you know, nothing smaller than a five minute chunk or, you know, a 15 or a 30 minute chunk. Um, so that's why it kind of makes sense to not have bins. For height, it's also a quantitative continuous variable, but it's not the case that, you know, people come in variation of half inches. You know, we have all sorts of variation and lots of in-between values. So in this instance, it makes sense to kind of be like, okay, are you between 59.95 and 61.95 inches? If I were to list out individual heights, I mean, they would be a nightmare. So instead what we're doing is we're grouping them into bins. So this is a bin. Right, so this little window here is a bin, it's a range. And what we see is that five people responded that they were between 59.95 and 61.95 inches. We had 40 people respond that they were between 65.95 and 67.95 inches. So that's how we're gonna read that table. The cumulative frequency, relative frequency, and CRF are all gonna be computed the exact same way, there's no difference. So let's start that now. So the first one, remember, we just copy over and then we go ahead and we add up. So the next one we get is five plus three, which is eight. Then we get eight, sorry, then we get 15 plus eight. I'm gonna write this a little bit more consistently. So I know I'm always pulling that first number to the left, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. So the first thing, I'm, I'm adding eight and I get 23. And then I'm gonna add 23 and I get 63. And then I'm gonna add 63 and then I'm gonna get 80, yeah, okay. And then I'm gonna add 80 and I'm gonna get 92. And then I'm gonna add 92, I get 99. And then I'm gonna add 99. And that brings me to my 100. So this is good because the sample is supposed to be 100 people. My total was 100. If I added up the numbers and the frequency, it would also have gotten 100 as well. So there's your cumulative frequency. And now we're going to do the relative frequency. So this is going to be 5 over 100. This is going to be 3 over 100, 15 over 100. And all the way down the list, and let's see, let's see, 40, 100, 17, 100. And this is pretty nice because I can just write these straight off. So 0 0.05, 0 0.03, 0 0.15. Point forty, point seventeen, point twelve, and if you can't do this in your head, that's fine. You can always put it in a calculator. <clears throat> so we want to repeat the same process we had um, with the cumulative frequency. So again, this is going to be just copying the first entry. And then now I'm going to add them together. And then I get 0 0.15 plus 0 0.08 equals 0 0.23. And then 0 0.40 plus Right, so I'm going to add 23 to this. Then that 67 comes down here. 
And then that 0 0.80 comes down here. And that 0.92 comes down here. And then that 99 comes down here. And this is exactly where we need to end up. Remember, we need to end up at one. So if I were to total all of the relative frequencies, I would have gotten 1.00. Make sure that that matches with what you end with at your relative frequency. Again, there might be slight discrepancies due to rounding. We didn't encounter that this time. So let's talk about how to read this table. So right here in example 1.14, it's asking us, find the percentage of heights that are less than 65.95 inches. So the percentage of heights that are less than 65.95 inches, 65.95. Okay, so that's gonna be these guys here. So there's a couple of ways I could do this. I could look at the frequency of each of the bins. I could say, okay, it's going to be 0 0.05 plus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.15. I could totally do that and I would get 0.23. Or, and this is why we do cumulative relative frequency, I could just look at 0 0.23, right? Because that tells me everything that's happened up to that point. So for us, the answer is 0 0.23. And now we have to convert that into a percentage. So if we want to convert a decimal into a percent, the way we do that is we just swing the decimal place over to the right two times. And we call it a percent and that's it. So 23% of the 100 male semi-professional soccer players are less than 65.95. So what if I wanted to find out, um, you know, how many soccer players are taller than 69.95? So I could just do it the other way. I wouldn't look at just that being one, I would just look at the different bins for each one. 